to the next point, we should ensure that whatever we do is clear. That means work is being done, we can see that it is in opposite direction. Good day learners, you are welcome to another segment of Agricultural Science class. My name is Rashida Umar. Our topic for discussion today is aquaculture. My learners, I know most of you have been eating fish at home, which serves as source of protein. So today we are going to talk about fish farming. Uh, we are going to look at the meaning of aquaculture, meaning of fish farming, definition of some terminologies that are associated to fish farming, uh, importance of fish farming, conditions necessary for sighting a, a fish pond, classification of fishes, then assignment. Now let's look at the definition of aquaculture. Aquaculture can be defined as the rearing of aquatic animals, especially fish, shrimp, crab, etc in controlled marine or fresh water. When we say aqua here, we are referring to what? We are referring to water. So aquaculture simply means the rearing of aquatic animals. And these aquatic animals, they include fish farming, shrimp farming, crab farming, etc. But today, we are going to talk about fish farming. What is fish farming? Fish farming is the act of rearing selected species of fish under scientifically controlled condition in an enclosed body of water, such as pond, stream, rivers, and where they feed, they grow, and are harvested for consumption. So when we say rearing of fish uh, or fish farming, it simply means rearing, the act of rearing of fish. And this rearing has to be where? in an enclosed body of water, such as the pond, river, or uh, stream. Example of fishes that we use in fish farming, they include, uh, we have the catfish, we have carpfish, we have tilapia, we have mudfish, etc. And why do we use this fish specifically for fish, uh, fish farming? It's because they are what? Most of them, they are resistant to disease, and they grow and mature fast. Now, students, before we continue with this topic, we have to look at definition of some terms that are associated to this topic. The first one is fisheries. Fisheries, this is the study of fish and fishes. The act or the study of fish and fishes, it is known as fishery. Uh, fish, this refers to a particular species regardless of the number or quantity. In fish farming, when you say fish, you are not referring to a singular fish. You are referring to what? A specific species. Once it is a particular species, for example, tilapia and fish, even if they are up to 100, you still refer them to as what? Fish. But when you bring two fishes together, that is another uh, species, that is the tilapia with the catfish, it is known as what? Fishes. So regardless to the number and quantity, once they are the same species, you call them Fish. The third one is fishes. This refers to different species of fish. Here, when the fish I said, as I earlier mentioned, if there are two different species, that is, when you bring tilapia fish with a catfish, even if they are single, single, you call them fishes because they are of what? Two different species. The, the fourth one there is the fries. Fries, they are newly hatched fish. When the fish are being hatched newly, they are referred to as what? Fries. Fingerlings. Fingerlings, they are the young or baby fish. That is, after uh, hatching, when they start developing and they reach up to a finger size, they are known as the fingerlings. And in the process of stocking, when you want to stock your pond, you use what? Fingerlings, but not the fries. Yes, these are equipment used in harvesting fish. The equipment that we use in harvesting fish, they are known as the gears. Example of such, uh, such equipment, they include a uh, fishing basket, fishing net, harpons, etc. Hatchery. Hatchery refers to the unit where fish eggs are incubated and hatch artificially into 
fish. That is a unit where what? Where we put the eggs and we hatch them into what? Into fish. Pond. Pond is an artificial body of water where fish can be reared. A pond, an artificial body of water where we stock our fish, where we rear fish is known as pond. Stocking. This refers to introduction of fingerlings into the pond. When you, start, when you want to start your fish uh, farming, you have your pond. So the process of what? Of introducing your fingerlings into the pond is known as stocking. When you introduce fish or fingerlings into what? Into your pond, you are doing, you are stocking. It refers to stocking. Now, let's, let's look at the importance of fish farming. Number one, we said it provides fish which serves as source of food to man and livestock. This fish, one of its major important is that it serves as what? Source of food, both to man and livestock. When I say livestock here, learners, I mean animals. Animals are also referred to, they are called livestock. Secondly, it provides a means of increasing the availability of protein to people at reduced cost. This fish, we said it was, it increased the availability of protein because it serves as what? Protein. But here, in what? In a reduced cost. We have other means of what? Or sources of protein. But fish is what? It serves as protein in a reduced cost because you cannot compare the price of fish to that of a beef. Example, in your house, if you have pot of, uh, let's say, 10 people, you can use 200 or 500 Naira uh, fish to cook and it will all serve the same purpose. It will give same protein. Unlike the beef, that you have to buy maybe a thousand Naira uh, beef before it can go round. Number three, it provides a means of recycling waste. For example, animal dung from the farm. Another important of this fish farming is that it what it provides means of recycling waste instead of you to be uh, throwing away the dunk the animal waste like your poultry uh, droppings you now use them you put them in the pond and they are going to serve as what as feed to the fish also the waste in your kitchen like the remnant of your food you can also use that instead of you to throw it away you recycle it you use it at worst as the fish uh, feed Another important, fish can be processed into fish by product. We have some other fish by product, which are known as like the fish meal, fish oil that are being produced out of the fish. So they are now what? They are the byproduct of fish. A better use of land and water in our environment is also ensured through fish farming. Instead of you to waste the land or water, when you are practicing fish farming, you are what? You are using your land and water in what? In a better way. Six, uh, it can generate foreign exchange to nation, especially when fish are exported to other countries. This our fish, sometimes we can what? We can export them to what? To other countries that is out abroad. And they will buy it and pay their money in what? In foreign currency. So that has assist or helped in a very long way, it has helped the country to what? To gain the foreign uh, currency. Fish farming, that is number seven, it's also useful in area of research work and other educational purposes. Uh, now let's look at the conditions that are necessary for sighting a fish pond. As a farmer, you want to sight a fish pond. There are some basic factors or conditions that you have to what? that are very, very necessary, you have to what? You have to consider them before start or before sighting your fish pond. And these conditions include, number one, adequate water supply. There must be constant supply of water of good quality and quantity. The water can be from stream, lake, rivers, irrigation canals, etc. Good quality is necessary because it provides oxygen 
to the fish. As a farmer, the most important or vital part of it before you start, you have to what? You have to get adequate water supply. In what? In good quantity and quality. Because some, of, some water does not have a uh, quality in terms of fish uh, farming. Like the ones that contain chemical, or if the water is too toxic, it what? It affects and kills the fish. So uh, the, the best water, they are the water that we get from the stream, lake, rivers, or even your well. But the pump or uh, pipe water, they are not good enough for this uh, fish farming. Number two, soil in the area. Soil in the area must be fertile so as to supply nutrients to the fish. It should be clay because of its ability to hold water, which is very important in fish pond construction. Soil with too much sand or gravel is not good and will not retain water. You have to consider what? The soil in the area. This soil has to be what? It has to be fertile. And it has to what? It has to be a type of soil that retain water. Example like the loamy soil and the clay soil. They retain water. All like the sand and gravel, they are not very good for what? For fish ponds because they don't hold water. Number three, vegetation of the area. Low vegetation, especially grassland, are preferred. Woody sites are not suitable because clearing and stomping will greatly increase the cost of setting the fish pond. What we are saying here is that you have to look for an area that is what? That has low vegetation, that is grassland, so that you will not spend much money on what? On removing the stumps, on clearing the area. Number four, topography. Topography is another uh, factor that you have to consider when sighting a fish pond. The shape of the land should allow for easy draining and filling of the pond with water. The water must flow from a place that is higher than the pond so that the water can flow into the pond directly. If not, the need for water pump will arise and this will increase cost of your project. Here, they are talking about the topography of the area. You have to look for an area that is what? That is sloping. When you construct your fish pond at an area that is on a hill, that means it will cause or it will increase your production because the water will not flow into the pond except with the uh, help or use of what? Water pumps. And these water pumps, they are expensive. So that will what? It will increase the cost of your production. What you're supposed to do is you look for area that is on lower level and you construct your what? Your pond. So that the water that will be going in and out of the pond, it will be very easy without the need of any water pump. Availability of fast growing fish. That is another factor. Fingerlings for stocking a fish pond should be type that can grow fast and mature within a very short time. The use of improved varieties in stocking fish pond uh, makes farming more profitable. When you want to start fish farming, you have to what? You have to consider the availability of what? The fast growing fingerlings. And we say these fast growing fingerlings, they are what? The fingerlings, they are the baby or the young fish that we stock, that we put into the pond. So you have to what? You have to look for the ones that are fast growing so that they can grow and mature within short period of time, like within five to six months. All like the other normal ones that are not hybrid, you can keep them for more than a year and they will not grow or mature early. Another factor is availability of supplementary feed stuff. Supplementary feeding is done to ensure rapid growth of fish. Compounded feed in form of pellets are used to supplement the natural feed called planktons. These planktons, they are what? Planktons, they are feed. They are living, microscopic living organisms in water. So these animals or these fish, they what? They feed on the planktons. And these planktons, they are in two forms. They are in, some of them are in forms of plants, while others are in form of what? Animal. So the ones that are in form of plants are known as the phytoplanktons. While the ones that are in form of uh, animal, they are known as the zooplanktons. So these are uh, feed. These compounded feed, they are what? They are artificial. 
they are artificial feed that are being compounded. And this feed is being made from uh, our cereal, that is maize, sorghum, wheat, or soya beans. And most of it, it contains about 40 to 45% of the cereal and 20% of what? Fish oil, then with other minerals and vitamins. As you can see here, this is uh, a diagram showing your fish uh, feed. That is the artificial feed. As you can see here, they are of different colors, depending on what. What makes the colors different is that it depends on the type of cereal that is made to make the feed. If it is like the maize, for example, the feed is going to be what? Lighter in color. And when you use wheat, it's going to be what? Darker in color. So this is example of what? Of a compounded artificial fish feed. Now, learners, we are going to see classification of fishes. Fishes can be classified into two main groups, namely classification of fish based on their habitat and also classification based on what? Their body structure, which is also known as their morphology. We said what? The classification of fish is in two groups, that is, Classification based on what? Their habitat. Secondly, classification based on their morphology, that is their body structure, which we are going to see them uh, one after the other. Now, let's look at the classification of fish based on their habitat. Under this classification, two groups exist. There are two groups that exist under classification based on habitat, that is, Ten, uh, that is freshwater fish. This freshwater fish, these fishes live in what? Fresh water. The water does not contain salt. When you say fresh water, it means the water does not contain salt. So, uh, example of such fish that are fresh fish water, they are, we have the pond, we have the stream, we have river, we have lake, etc. An example of fishes that belongs to this fresh water, they include amut fish, catfish, tilapia fish, and also the carp fish. As you can see here, this is a picture or diagram of what? Fresh water fish. They live in fresh water. That is the water that does not contain salt. Here is tilapia. It's also part of the fresh water fish. The second classification is salt water. We have seen the word fresh water, and now we are going to see the salt water fish. These fishes live in water containing salt. The previous one, we say they are fresh water, they do not contain salt. Here, the salt water, it contains what? Salt. Such uh, water that contains salt are lagoons, we have sea, and oceans. And the example of fish that what that live in salt water include salmons, mackerel, shark, tilapia, and so on. As you can see, this is a diagram showing you a picture of a mackerel. The other one there is shark. This is dolphin. Dolphin fish. They are all what? They are all salt water fish. Now, the second classification is classification based on the body structure. That is classification based on their morphology. Under this classification, two groups also exist. That is the bony fishes. These bony fishes possess bony skeleton. Example are tilapian, mud fish, carp fish. They are all found in what? In fresh water. We say most of the fish that are what? That are bony fish. They what? They have 
bony skeleton. That is, when you look at the skeleton of the fish, it is bony. It has bony skeleton. And most of these fishes that are bony fishes, they what? They are from fresh water. They are freshwater fish. As you can see here, this is the skeleton of a catfish. If you look at it very well, you will see it has what? Bony skeletons. The bones are there, they are all over. They are clear, you can see it. The second classification is cartilaginous fishes. We say the first one is what? The bony fish. And the second one is the cartilaginous fishes. These fishes possess soft bones are composed of cartilages. Majority of these fish are found in salt water. An example are shark, dolphin, dogfish, etc. That is, we say example of the cartilaginous fish, they are what? They are, most of them, they are salt water fish. That is like the dogfish, we have dolphin, etc. This is a picture showing you the skeleton of a shark. As you can see here, it doesn't have bone, but it has what? Cartilaginous. This cart cartilage, they are what? They are very soft. They are soft. They are not as strong as the bones. And most of them, we say they are what? Salt water fish. My learners, we have come to the end of this uh, lesson. We have seen what the importance of fish farming, definition of aquaculture, definition of uh, fish farming, classification of fishes. So before I go, I would like to leave you with this assignment. Question number one A, what is fish farming? Question number one B, list five importance of fish farming. I repeat, question number one A, what is fish farming? Number one B, list five importance of fish farming. Question number 2A, mention four factors that should be considered when citing a fish pond. Question number 2B, briefly explain the following terms associated with fish farming. Roman figure one, fingerlings, two, pond, three, gears. I repeat, mention four factors that should be considered when citing a fish pond. Question number 2B, Briefly explain the following terms associated with uh, fish farming. Number one, fingerlings. Number two, pond. And three, gears. Uh, for further studies, you can consult the following textbooks. Number one, Essential of Agricultural Science for Senior Secondary School by Iwena. Two, Prescribe Agricultural Science for Senior Secondary School by or more rowing. For submission of your assignment or for any inquiry, you can contact me at this number, Rashida Umar 080-3451-3576. I repeat, 080-3451-3576. Stay home, stay safe, and keep learning. Always remember to wash your hands with running water and detergent. Thank you for listening.